This tutorial will cover how to edit a record of employment within WagePoint. This workflow is for editing a record of employment that has not been submitted to Service Canada using ROE SAT via WagePoint. If you require edits to an ROE that has been submitted, please start with the other tutorial on how to amend an ROE before proceeding here. Feel free to watch this tutorial as you follow along our knowledge base article. As always, remember any edits to the payroll information in the ROE will not update payroll reports within WagePoint. The employer takes full responsibility for accuracy of changes to any pre-populated data in the record of employments. I have broken down the editing steps into four, into four easy steps. First stop, let's find the ROE that we would like to edit. <laughs> We're gonna head up to reports here in the orange banner. We're going to navigate down to the More tab and click on ROE Files. We want to scroll down to the employee that we wish to edit the ROE for, and under the action columns, we're going to click on View and Submit ROE. This opens up the visual ROE. This is where we can hit the Edit button. Please read the important message on screen. As I've so said before, any edits to payroll information will not update the payroll records within wage points. You cannot undo any changes you make to the ROE. Okay, step one, let's review the employee information. You will see here that all the fields are grayed out and read only as they are auto-populated from the company information tab settings. Take a review here for accuracy. Then you can move on to the employee information. If the information here is valid, it will display as read only. Again, review for accuracy. Fields that require your input will be open for data entry. Please correct any invalid characters in the employee name or address as invalid characters, including foreign language characters, can lead to a rejection of your ROE by Service Canada. Next, we have the Record of Employment Information section. All information in this section will be pre-populated from the information that you provided during the previous workflow steps for Create ROE or Termination Workflow. You can edit the information here if you choose. Again, any edits to this pre-populated data within the ROE will not update the payroll records within wage points. Next, we see pay period type. This will auto-populate with the employee's pay cycle. Moving on to first day worked, you can change this date from the default date to, to, to select any date greater than the defaulted employee's hire or rehire date. Then we see last day for which paid. You can change this from the default date, but it must be equal to or greater than the pay cycle start date and less than or equal to the pay cycle end date for the last pay period processed for this employee. Moving on to final pay period ending date. This date will automatically default to the cycle end date of the last payroll processed for this employee. You can change this from the, from the defaulted date to select another cycle date as the last known payroll. Expected date of recall. This field is optional, but the selected date must be greater than the final pay period ending date. If the field is open and nothing is entered, the system will default to unknown. And then of course, the reason for issuing this ROE then we're going to hit save and next. You can also click save and exit to save any information you have edited and exit the workflow to finish later. Of course, canceling will take you right out of the edit ROE workflow and any changes you made will not be saved. Save and next. Step two, insurable earnings. You will be able to view and edit all of the rows that capture the employee's insurable earnings by pay period based on the payroll frequency. 
this system automatically pre-populates data based on your specified reporting period, the first day worked to the final pay period ending date. Review the data for accuracy and edit if needed. The system automatically displays the information from your wage point payroll data. However, you can enter historical data for payrolls prior to wage point as well. This data will be stored and displayed on the ROE, but it will not impact payrolls processed within wage point. If you delete the ROE, any historical data will need to be entered again. The information is organized in descending order, starting with the most recent pay period and date. The values in pay period one should reflect the final pay period, including the last day for which paid. As you edit the data in the rows, the values in the total insurable earnings the total insurable hours will total at the bottom here. These totals will update to reflect any changes that you have made in the fields above. The tally in these boxes is read only and must only be edited by making changes in the rows above. Click save and next to proceed to the next step, or you can save the information and come back later. Step three, separation payments. Here you will be able to view and edit all separation payments related to this employee. For vacation pay, box 17 on the record of employment, click on add vacation pay, te add vacation pay text to create a new row in the table should you need. Use the date picker to select the desired start date and end date to be and the amount to be paid as the vacation pay. You can also delete a row by clicking on the trash icon to the right. Please note that vacation pay has different rules depending on how it is being paid. When the employee's vacation is set to be paid out with each pay, Wage point will automatically state the reason code as vacation was included with each pay, and no additional vacation pay needs to be added here. Vacation will still show the amount that was included in the last pay on this screen. This is as expected, and no change needs to be made. The ROE will show and send only the verbiage included with each pay in box 17. If the employee's vacation is set to accrue or is not applicable and you pay out vacation pay on the final payroll, WagePoint will automatically report that amount and include the reason paid because no longer working on the record of employment. However, if you need to remove the amount from box 17 for any reason, Please note that you will also be responsible for reducing that vacation amount reported in pay period one during step two of the insurable earnings during this edit process. Second, we have statutory holiday pay. Again, you can click and add lines or delete lines according to your needs. This information will populate into box 17B on the record of employment. Other monies. In the type column, choose the corresponding code for the type of payment that you would like to use here. We've got all of them you can select from. You can go pick your start date and end date and the amount. These will auto-populate into block 17C on your record of employment. Here are important notes to keep in mind. Any bonus paid in the last pay cycle has to be reported with the dollar amount. If the specific type of bonus is not in the drop-down menu, please indicate it as bonus other. If you select bonus other or other, as the type, the comment box will become required. 
a required field in order to save the page. The information in this section is used to auto-populate block 18 on the record of employment. If you select USUP down here, USUP Supplemental Unemployment Benefit Code, the start date and end date will become disabled. A comment is not required. Please remember that pay in lieu and severance pay are two different things. Pay in lieu has employment insurance premiums and deductions attached, while severance pay does not. Pay in lieu should be listed in the previous step we just went over with insurable earnings, and it should be included under the most recent pay period one. Whereas severance pay needs to be reported here, but not added to pay period one. Please check the knowledge base article for specific instructions on payments toward paid maternity, sick leave, compassionate care, group wage loss indemnity. Otherwise, <laughs> we'd be here all day. Here they are below. Note, you are allowed to enter one of each payment type, for example. You cannot have two rows for paid sick leave. For information in this section used to auto, all the information in this section is used to auto populate box 19 on the record of employment. Click save and next to proceed. Step four, review your communication preference. Then move on to the name of issuer. This is read only because the field auto populates with the same information of the ROE contact who signed the record, the ROE SAT registration addendum. There's a contact phone number in an editable field, and it will auto populate with the phone number of the administrator. If there is no phone number or a selected administrator on file, the number will default to the company phone number in the company information tab. Date issued is auto-populated with the current date. Note, clicking cancel at this stage will allow you to continue editing. Next, click save and next to review the ROE. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> now we can double check for accuracy and click submit to Service Canada. Success, your ROE is on the way. Once an ROE has been submitted to Service Canada, you can check the status by navigating up to reports, down to more ROE files, and here's your list of all the submission status for all the ongoing or submitted ROEs. You will have received an automatic email from WagePoint notifying you if Service Canada has processed your file or if there are any issues you need to fix and resubmit. Thank you for watching.